Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This talk is brought to you by Envision Coworking, where you will share an inspiring space with a community of creative and supportive people. Our speaker is Andrew Barber Starkey. Andrew is the founder and president of Pro Coach International Inc. And Andrew is a master certified coach. In the past 20 years, over 5,000 entrepreneurs, small business owners, and salespeople have used Andrew's unique coaching program, the Pro Coach Success System. And they have used it to dramatically accelerate their business results while increasing their time off and improving their quality of life. Vancouver Business Network, I invite you now to put your hands together and let's give Andrew Barber Starkey a warm, warm BBN welcome. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Well, first of all, uh, Roger, thank you very much for that wonderful introduction and for the opportunity to be here and speak to this group. Um, so as Roger mentioned, I own a company named ProCoach International Inc. And for the last 25 years, I focused on one thing and one thing only, and that is helping self-employed entrepreneurs and self-managing professionals, financial advisors, salespeople, and so on, become more effective at their business and move ahead in their business so that they're more profitable and they achieve their goals. So I have a, a bit of a different approach, I think, than most of the, the, the coaches, authors, speakers, and trainers that you'd probably get up here. Um, you, rather than teaching intellectual concepts and, and principles and so on, which I find, quite frankly, you probably find too, you go home and you never really implement them, I want to give you something really very practical. So my, my approach is, um, what I've done is I've designed a very simple, easy to use and yet highly effective structure that allows people, anybody who's using it to dramatically improve their performance. And um, ideally and, and normally you can do that without actually working harder, which I think is pretty cool because as some of you already said, you work too hard and don't, and don't have enough time. So this system doesn't focus on what you should do and create a long to-do list of things that, you know, ultimately don't get done and you start beating yourself up for it, you kind of go into a downward spiral in your self-confidence. Instead, my the system does exactly the opposite. It helps you identify some very, very specific priorities that are gonna move you forward to whatever your goals are. And then it keeps you on track and make sure that you follow through and make those things happen. As a result is an upward spiral because the bottom line is that when you take action, you get results. And when you get results, you create momentum. And when you create momentum, everything starts to work. And some of those, you know, those of you who've had momentum in your business know exactly what I mean. So um, as Roger mentioned, I've coached over 5,000 people, but I think that really what's a little bit unique and different about me and my, my business and my practice is that I um, currently have about 50 clients that I'm working with. And it's almost stunning to me to believe, but 16 of those clients have been paying me couple hundred dollars for coaching every single month for over 10 years. Wouldn't it be nice to have that kind of loyalty? And I actually, uh, as of May, I've got three of my clients that will be, have, have been clients of mine paying me every month for over 20 years. And it's, I mean, if you ask them, well, well why do you stay? They, you know, I sometimes wonder that myself, but they say, Andrew, coaching's an investment. And you know, as long as you get a return on your investment, why wouldn't you stay, right? So every, every year I earn back more money than I put out, so, so I'm happy. So it's a very nice synergistic relationship, let's call it that way. Um, so what we're gonna do tonight, I'm gonna do two things. First of all, I wanna open your eyes to what I consider to be a drastically underutilized resource that you have. You already have it, you're just not using it. And I explain how you can use it to help you get ahead faster in your business. So again, practical, you can actually do it rather than intellectual. And the second thing I'll do is share the number one most, most valuable, powerful principle that I've discovered in 27 years of coaching. The one thing that can really change everything for you if you wanna move ahead faster in your business. So no matter how successful you are and where you're at in your business today, beginning, 
middle, well along the way. If you put this principle into practice, it will absolutely move you ahead faster and get your results faster. So there's one other thing I just want to say um, before we get started. There's a, there's a common um, statement out there that one of the, hot, the greatest fears of many, many people is speaking publicly, yes? Raise your hand if you kind of relate to that. Okay, so for those of you that have that challenge, I just want to let you know that me too. You know, I just am, I just am terrified speaking. And, and I don't know why it is. I mean, I'm smart. I've, I've um, flown a hang glider across the Rocky Mountains and been to 19,000 feet on a hang glider, but I get scared in front of a group. It's, it's absolutely crazy. But um, I, I can tell you that just, um, you, know, you gotta step up and do it and maybe people won't even notice. But I wanna say that in transparency, people sometimes say, well, why do you speak if you hate it so much? And I can give you three reasons. Number one is that even though I'm not a great public speaker, I know I'm a great coach and I have learned so much along the way. And those of you who have worked with me know that there's just, I have so much to share and I wanna make sure that, uh, you know, my passion, my love is to empower people. I wanna get it out there, so that's one reason. The second reason is that I want to live my life as a role model. And one thing I know for sure is that if you start giving into your fears, your world starts getting smaller and smaller. If you ever want to create something great in your life, you want to start something new, you absolutely have to have the courage to step out and take action. So I hope to inspire you with that. And the third reason is that I'm a coach. And even though many of my clients stay 10 and apparently even 20 years, I'm still always looking for new people that uh, or might be interested in what I do. So I'm out here and hopefully some of you will see what I, what I do and say, well, wow, that's an interesting guy. Maybe I should have a conversation with him. So that's kind of the, the uh, rationale behind me speaking and confronting my fears. So what we're gonna talk about is this uh, a concept that I call, let's see if I get the thing working, discover the power of your hidden gold mine. It's very, very powerful. And it's really simple, but if you put it into practice, it absolutely changes everything. Because what I believe is that every single one of us has just a, a vault, a, 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 you know, a pile of money that we could just reach in and get if we wanted to. And yet, for, for whatever reason, we just, we just let it sit there. And so um, this is what I call your centers of influence. Your centers of influence are anybody uh, it's just like I've got a definition of here. Anyone who is willing and able, willing and able to connect you with opportunities and resources that you need to achieve your goals. These are centers of influence. There are many, many of them. And, you know, you already know many people who would be willing and able to help you, but you haven't been asking them, haven't been utilizing that. Plus, we're going to talk about how you go from where you're at now to even expanding it and reaching a lot more people. So I know those of you sitting in the audience, there's always one question. Well, what's in it for me? Why should I pay attention? So I'll say this. In my experience, first thing is that you'll be able to get ahead financially better. That's a good thing, yes? We like that. The second is that if you do this properly, you can increase your status, your influence, and your reputation. You can actually step the whole game up. And as you start to rise up, everything will change for you. And the third is that we'll it will um, actually create a transformation in you in terms of your own confidence. Because when you get to a new higher level, you start to resonate energetically at that level and it, it literally changes everything. So um, I'll be tell giving you the basics of this, but I will tell you there's only one person I've ever met who has really, really mastered, or even come close to using the full potential of this concept when I showed it to him remarkable young man who I met when he was 28 years old and a financial advisor. And where are you? You know, Jason, right? Um, and he was earning about $80,000 a year. And he said, Andrew, I want to double my income. So um, we started working and we started using some of these concepts. And within a year, he doubled his income. And then he came back to me and said, uh, I'm sorry, I, I really wasn't being honest with you. Actually, I want to make a million dollars in one year. So, okay, well, we have to get a little more serious about this then, right? And we, we dived seriously into this process, but um, five and a half years later, he earned over a million dollars and consistently does that 
on a regular basis now. So this will absolutely work for you, but only if you use it. So let's start at the beginning. The first thing you have to do in order to make this work is to utilize the centers of influence you already have. These people that are, that are out there that are willing and able to support you. So we want to utilize what we've got now. And then the, the next level, and this is what we're going to talk primarily about today, is that step two is how do you develop your centers of influence? How do you take it to a whole new level? And that's what we're going to work on. So the number one message I, I want to, to uh, focus on with you today is that I want you to selectively and strategically, proactively build a larger network and a stronger network of contacts to get ahead. Okay, let's take a look. How can these centers of influence help you achieve your goals anyway? Well, there's many, many ways, but I'm going to share with you six of them that what I think of the biggest. So, first of all, um, six powerful ways that your centers of influence can help you. The first one is to do business with you. Now, how many of you like to do business with people that you know and trust? Yes? That's a pretty normal thing, right? So, so um, in other words, if you want to do more business with people, you want to have more people in your life who know you and trust you. Does that make sense? So the, um, um, there's some reasons why we want to work with people that we're familiar with, with uh, people that we know. So for one thing, they're kind of predictable. We have a sense of them. It, it's much easier because you don't have to be, keep looking over your shoulder. You know, you don't have to get written agreements on everything. Nobody's going to stab you in the back and so on. And um, it's much less stressful generally than working with somebody you've never met before. So uh, doing business with people that you know is, a, you know, it's the way to go. And yet there's this thing we hear about and, and people talk about called the old boys network. You've heard about that, right? And there's this resistance to the old boys network because they're getting all the big opportunities. And I'm here to tell you that's not a conspiracy. It's just that people like to do business with others that they know and trust. And right now you're not one of them. So my, my challenge for you is as a result of this talk, you're gonna step out and raise yourself to a higher level than that. And don't complain about the old boys network, get into that level instead. So again, people prefer to do business with others that they know and trust. Second way that your centers of influence can help you is they can send you referrals and introductions. A, a lot of people here tonight shared their talks, their, their, their elevator speech on what they're looking for. And um, people can send you their, in, uh, the people that are gonna be a fit for you. So everybody you know, if they're clear, if, if, if your network is clear about the problem that you can solve for people and kind of client you like to work with, it's much easier for them to help you and they will in referring other clients to you. The third thing people can do is they can use their influence to your benefit. So uh, for example, um, you know, if you want to, if you want to, to get, if you're trying to get something and, and so on, um, if, you're, if you're, this is where the public speaking thing comes in. Um, if, if you're um, um, stepping out and, you, and you, you're looking for something, other people can influence a decision. For example, let's say, uh, Steve, you're looking for, uh, trying to get some business with a, a company. You may know somebody in that company. They not be, may not be the decision maker, but they could be in a position to request or even force that, that bu uh, buyer's agent to take a look. And therefore, uh, they, they help you through influ influencing. So the, um, um, maybe you want just an opportunity to get a quote on something. Again, somebody can, somebody can help you with that. Or in a personal realm, and this is gonna cross between uh, the, the whole gamut of things in business and personal. I don't know, ever tried to get tickets to a concert? How do you do it? You, if you're like me, you know somebody who knows how to get tickets, right? And you have them do it. So that's, again, they, they can influence and, they, um, and can help, help you that way. Um, one time I held a, um, a, a event like, like this kind of thing at the Terminal City Club. I'm not a member of the Terminal City Club, but a friend of mine was, and he was able to arrange for me to speak there. So they, people can influence things for you. Uh, fourth thing that your center of influence can do to help you, they can provide you with information. 
but maybe you have a friend that's working in a company and they can't do any influence for you, but they say, you know what? Our manager is really, really unhappy with our group insurance plan. Or, you know what? We're, we're, we're planning to, I, I, I heard a rumor that we're planning to sell the business. You should be, you know, talking to that. So if people know what you do and they're out there looking for information, then you can get connections that way. So lots of different kinds of information that you can uh, get. If somebody's, uh, what they're, if you're about to do business with somebody and um, uh, you know somebody who knows them, it kind of makes sense to contact that person and say, what are this person's hot buttons? Like, what, you know, what do they like? What do they dislike? How can I avoid an upsetting them? Are they a fast decision maker or a slow decision maker? And so on. So there's lots of different ways that people can help you with, uh, with information. Um, another way they can help you is to provide you with resources. Now the standard one in the personal realm of this is anybody ever own a pickup truck? Yeah? And what does everybody want? They want you to help them move, right? And move this, move that. It's a resource. So if you don't have a pickup truck, your friend who has, a, has one is a resource for you, right? And uh, so you can get access to the resources if you're good. In business, maybe you're, um, you know, some, somebody talked about setting up a partnership agreement earlier on. Maybe you um, want, to, want to get hold of a non-compete agreement. Rather than going to a lawyer, if you're a relatively small company, ask around. You'll be able to you, you ask the people that you know. And so, have you got a copy of a non-compete that you know I could just kind of look at and get a sense of it and create my own? And so there's there's things like that. It, you know, it's and or if you're looking for a piece of equipment or you need, need anything, it's so much easier to ask your network than it is to go looking online or um, in the old days in the, in the phone book, the yellow pages. So I'll give you a couple of quick examples. Um, this time last year, my sister, who had been with me for seven years, um, moved on to a great position. I totally supported her in, her in her next step, but I needed to hire a new assistant. So how do you do that in today's world? Well, I did three things. Number one, I ran an ad in the North Shore News, which cost me about 500 bucks, and got nothing. And I signed up on an Indeed, which I'd never even heard of because Parent of Pam had been with me for so long and used Indeed. I don't know what it cost me, a whole whack of money. And all I got was these, uh, it was, it's a part-time position and I got these people from um, you know, Switzerland that were gonna move over. I mean, it was just absolutely the most bizarre thing ever. And the, the third thing I did, I sent out an email to about 450 people that I know on the North Shore that happened to be in my database. And out of that, I got the perfect assistant. We only ever did one interview. And that was, that, that was a, it was a done deal. So you can, you can absolutely get access to resources. I've got a friend who's got a condo in Hawaii and our, we went over there for a family vacation. A lot easier than, I mean, we still have to rent it, but it's a lot easier than going through, I don't know, is this gonna be good or, or whatever, right? So lots of ways. So, um, and then the, the last way I'm gonna show you is that people in your centers of influence can actually offer you support and mentorship and coaching um, when you, when you know somebody who's more successful, as people get more successful, they typically want to help others, yes? So it's very, very common, not everybody, but many people. And so you can reach out, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but it's one of the most powerful ways that you can utilize this for sure. So, get all these things your network, your um, centers of influence can do. Who are these people, anyway? Well, the first group, is your family and relatives. Like I think of it kind of as expanding circles. So the first is your family's, uh, family and relatives. And even though you may not love them all, they may, may not all be great. Um, families are often, people in the family are often willing to do things that they, you know, above and beyond what somebody you don't know would do. I got an email last September, beginning of September, from a fellow, it was, it was actually um, um, the strangest thing. I get this email. And uh, he goes, yeah, I want to introduce myself. My name's Mike Barber Starkey, and I live in England. Well, now there's not very many Barber Starkeys in the world. And I got a pretty good handle on the family tree, and this guy didn't quite fit in. But anyway, so we, but we obviously responded to him. And he says, yeah, I'm in England, and I'm, I'm doing, a bus doing business with Rocky Mountain Bikes, and I'm coming out to, to Vancouver, and I you know, thought it might be interesting to see if we get some family going. And anyway, bottom line, we went back and forth a few times, um, had some conversation. I said, well, Come and stay with us, right? He's a sort of distant relative, but so what? 
So that, that's a fam, the family kind of things uh, that, that can happen. The next, um, the next level out, next level of circles, and in many cases, your best, most powerful centers of influence are people who are your friends. Ideally, you want to, you want to have good quality friends that can, that can help you. And generally, if, you know, if they know you and trust you and like you, they will do what they can to help you, yes? So these are people um, who will you know, go the extra mile. When I first started ProCoach, in, well, I started my own um, program after I left working with Harv Ecker. I, um, you know, I, there was so much going on. We incorporated the company and so many things. A couple of friends came and worked for me for about two weeks for free, just to kind of get us launched. It was amazing. And, um, you know, I still appreciate those people and, and remember to the, them to this day. Okay, third level, third circle, business associates. And especially if you worked in an office, there's a lot of people you know uh, in your office that, um, it, you know, you may not talk to them all the time or whatever, but they're, you, can, you can have a conversation and ask them, tell them what you're looking for and, and, and ask them to spread the word. So business associates are a, a great um, a source of centers of influence, whether they be your peers, the managers, uh, you know, any, anybody on the staff, anything like that. Then you get to the level of acquaintances. So an acquaintance are people you know casually, but they're not really a friend. So I would say social contacts that you have, um, maybe a, a, a client if you don't have a one-on-one -on -one relationship but they just come into your business or um, you meet them in networking events or something like that. Um, you, you, they're, they're people that you know, know who you are. Maybe they're a, a supplier for you, right? Or, or you know, a neighbor. But they're, they're often still willing to help you out. Um, a couple of years ago, again, another personal example. Um, we live in Deep Cove on the a, on a side of the hill. And um, I, I had a water, a water leak. And the, one of the guys just up the street, I guess all of the houses in the neighborhood were sort of having it over a period of years. And one of the guys up the street had his, jaw, had his water pipe um, replaced from the street to the road is what it was. And the guy, the people who did it were fantastic. Like I watched them, you know, as I was walking the dog and everything was put back perfectly. So I went and banged on his door and I said, who is that company you use? And, you know, sure enough, he introduced me and they did a fantastic job. So, and, you know, we'd never even met before that. Just sort of, you know, neighbors, whatever. So you've got all of these different circles out there and um, you know, at the, at the extreme level is what I would call contacts. These are people who you know, you know you or would know at least know who you are if you contact them and reach out to them. And, um, you know, I'll give you an example. Again, I work with a lot of financial advisors as, as one of the niches that I do my coaching in. And I was wanted, there was an event coming to town, an educational event that I wanted to get into, but I wasn't the, with one of the financial companies. I couldn't get in. So I went to the manager of one of the financial companies and said, can you help me get in? And he said, oh, sure, I'll just put you on our list, right? So, um, you know, I didn't really know him or anything, but, you know, he just was happy to do that for me. It was no big deal. So, yes. Sorry? Are you taking questions? Uh, sure, go for it. Could you talk about boundaries? So yeah. you, you and I are friends. But yeah. I would never ask you for a loan. Uh huh. There's this invisible boundary. Yeah, you know, nobody's ever asked me about that before. I think I think because the rest of the crowd is so much more appropriate in their behavior. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else would, or else maybe you're all this plush with cash. <laughs> so Roger, if you're broke and you're, you know, you can talk to me. But no, seriously, um, I've never. It, it comes back to what. Um, whoever was here said about being authentic, was it you, right? Um, these are, you need to have honest relationships with people. If somebody asks you for cash, I mean, if somebody asks me for cash, I just say no. It's like, and I, I don't, you know, being pulled around by other people's expectations or demands of you is the way to have a crappy life, basically. So if you feel inclined to lend them money or lend them your wife or whatever it is, <laughs> sure, go for it. But, um, like I said, it's never been an issue for me. So, um, 
We'll, we'll see when that comes up. I'll let you know. Let's, let's continue on and see how many centers of influence do you actually have? Well, that's a very interesting question. They say that the average person knows about 250 people. Now, I'm willing to bet that most of you in this room know far more than that. But let's just say that you know 250, and 50 of them are, some of them are in common, right? So they're not, it's not really, um, if we think about you with the people next to you, uh, you know, you know two, um, I'm gonna say you know 200 that, that your friends don't know, and then they know 200, right? That, that you're not, you don't have in common. So let's think about that. If you, ha if you have 200 and you have your friends and associates have 200, how many do you have? You have 40,000 centers of influence with just one step away. Now, if you think about it and the fact that, you know, Rogers Arena only holds 18,000 people, you got a lot of centers of influence out there or potential centers of influence. Now, are they all centers of influence really? Well, no, there's some of them that definitely aren't, but out of, out of knowing all of those people, what do you think the odds are that you, you can't find somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that's gonna be able to make an introduction for you or get you the speaking gig that you want or get the loan that you so desperately need, Roger? Um, <laughs> so, you know, there's, with all of those people out there, there's, there's, it, there's gotta be enough. Now, are they really all centers of influence? Let's look at the definition again. Definition is anybody who's willing and able to connect you with opportunities and resources that you need to, to achieve your goals. So is everyone out there? No, there's a, in that 40,000, obviously a, let's even say a vast majority of them that aren't a fit for that. But even so, you're gonna find some for sure. And then there's another caveat on this as well. What about this? What about the people you haven't met yet? How about them? How many of them are out there? So um, you know, here's, the, here's the thing. There, um, there's no limit on your ability to step out and reach other people. So for example, um, there's resources, why call them resources for you to connect with. And there's really no limit for you to reach out and connect to them. So there's gonna be different categories of them. One is people you encounter occasionally. So you pay, you know, you sort of, um, you know, I go to the gym in the morning and there's a person who's there, you know, we don't know each other, um, but you know, they know who I am. And for you, maybe it's a business owner, or um, as I said, you know, maybe it's a neighbor. So this is somebody you actually meet occasionally, you know who each other are. The second level is gonna be people that you've heard of and never met. You can still approach these people. So, you know, maybe you hear somebody interviewed on the radio and you go, wow, that person was great. Do you know, you could just reach out and call those people. Uh, back in, when I was working with Harv Ecker in, in 2000 to 2004, um, one of the jobs that he assigned me to, he said, I, I want to interview a, a, a master, you know, a, a, a really um, a successful trainer or, or author or something every month. Um, and I want you to do that for me. Well, I said, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Harv. So yeah, we're gonna do a one hour interview every month. So you know what, I interviewed Dan Millman who wrote The Way of the Peaceful Warrior, um, Michael Gerber who wrote The E-Myth. Um, I mean, just unbelievable people. Uh, Jay Abraham, marketing guru for those, those that know him, uh, Robert Allen. Um, I, I interviewed 36 people that were just you know, all multi-million selling authors. And you know how I got these interviews? I called them. And I introduced myself and I said, here's what I'm doing. We've got an audience of again, 2,000 people and uh, I'd love to do an interview with you. And they'd go, sure, well, you know, set it up. And away we'd go. So people will, will allow you to do that. It, it could be somebody um, in North Vancouver, I don't know how many of you live in North Vancouver, we've got a, a new fellow who's the president of the Chamber of Commerce. I can just call him up. He's gonna go for coffee with me no matter what, right? So there's, there's, you, can, you can just reach out people you, to reach you, people you've heard of. And then there's another category as well, which are people who you, where you wanna make a connection with. Like for example, Ian, as a, as a financial advisor, you have a particular target client. Let's, let's say um, you wanna work with dentists. Okay, well, uh, no worries. You can actually just reach out to dentists 
Or you could reach out to somebody who, as a business coach for dentists, and say, hey, who do you know? And let's the, the see what, 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 what you can, we can do together. And you can reach people that way. So it could be um, that if you were, uh, again, a financial advisor, you'd want to meet um, managers of small business owners, uh, managers of small businesses, or um, you know, a, a different, an accountant. Lots of people want to meet an accountant because they have so many clients. And, and if you can build a relationship with that accountant, you've got access with good trust and, and good service and good value to reach all of their clients. That was kind of the things that came up in the, uh, when we were doing the brainstorming here is how do you reach some people that know everybody in a, in a particular industry? And then here's the, the crazy category. How about people that you just decide to call? And uh, uh, this is a crazy example, but when, when we first bought our house in North Vancouver, um, it looks over the water and we had this railing that uh, the, the front deck was kind of mushed up and needed repair and this with this horrible railing across the front so when i sat at my dining room table and looked out at the water all i saw was bars like you don't want to know what i paid for that view i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna um look at bars so i want to you know I, i've never had a home before how am i going to find a contractor who's going to put a glass railing in for me you know what i did without a word of a lie I drove through West Vancouver and I found houses, some houses that had um, retro, obviously retrofitted glass railings. And I went and knocked on the door. <laughs> One little, I went, it was about five o'clock in the afternoon, I guess. Um, and and door opens this little Asian fellow and he says, oh yeah, yeah, come in and look. We, I, takes me upstairs through his house. They're sitting there having dinner, you know, all eight of them, and he takes me out of his deck and shows me around. I end up with the names of four contractors, out of which I found the one person I was looking for. There's nothing to stop you doing that, as long as you do it with the best of intentions and no expectations. So, you know, you can make a cold call to anybody. I'll give you another example. As I, um, I was um, as a coaching a financial advisor, and she said to me, Andrew. I think I'm thinking about becoming a certified cash flow um, uh, specialist. Uh, do you think I should do that? And I go, what the heck is a certified cash flow specialist? Never even heard of it before. So how do I know whether you're meant to be, do that or not? Which is, well, how am I meant to find out? And I said, well, why don't you talk to one? And she's just like, how? And I said, well, let's just look. We walked over to my computer. We looked onto LinkedIn, pushed the button on, on certified cash flow specialist. There were 200 of them. I said, there's one in Saskatoon. She is not competition for you. You live in Vancouver. Call her. And literally, she picked up the phone and phoned this person. They had about a 10-minute conversation. And she goes, yeah, I don't think it's for me. And I said, well, maybe call in a couple more. But you can do that. The woman at the other end was you know, either bored or you know, really looking for something to do. And anyway, it worked out really well. So you can, you can uh, find, the, find a person who does what you do in a different market you want ideas, you know, idea party like Roger does, phone somebody up who you can find them using LinkedIn or, or various different means, Facebook, and, and contact them and say, hey, I'm doing exactly what you're, it sounds like we've got some parallels. You want to share some ideas? You'd be stunned, stunned. What can happen when you do that? So my point is that the number of um, centers of influence you actually have, it's unlimited. It's absolutely unlimited. So now, you're, you're already um, utilizing your centers of influence. You kind of got this in your heads, yes? Now, what's next? We want to develop your centers of influence is the, ne is the next stage. So um, how do you strengthen your relationship with your, uh, um, your existing and, and do a better job of using your existing centers of influence and strengthen your relationship with other key people to take it to even a whole, a whole new level. And um, again, in my idea, proactively meet and develop new connections. So this is what, it's, it's like farming. You have to develop these people and yet this, the value of them is so amazing in, in terms of what they can do for you. Why wouldn't you do that? And maybe it's you know to strengthen a relationship you do some just connect with them on Facebook initially or 
You can strategically, uh, strategically identify people where you'd like to you know, have that relationship. And, and um, one way of keeping in touch with people is just with newsletters or you know, um, posting, posting here and there on social media. So there's so many different ways that you can just be in front of people's face and you know, develop your centers of influence with them. And one of the other ways is to be a center of influence for them. This is not a one-way street. So you want to ideally it to be a mutual, first of all, you have to have a mutual trust and you want to know what they do so you can help them as well. So there's all sorts of ways you can further develop your centers of influence. And the only question is, are you willing to or not? It takes a little bit of effort, but you know, it's a whole lot better, as Roger says, than sitting there looking at the computer, right? To actually talk to real, real live people. So the one of the best ways and, the, and the, to leverage all these centers of influence once you've developed them, very key piece. A couple of life-changing questions. So first of all, normally when you want something, what do you say? Okay. How am I going to get this? Yes? How am I going to, where am I going to get this? How am I going to get this? I'm telling you that's the wrong question. The question you need to be asking yourself is, who do I know or know of who could help me get this? Whole different thing. And okay, here's one of the biggest mistakes people make. They think that when they reach out to somebody and ask for, to somebody and ask for help, that they're imposing on them. I will tell you right now, when you ask somebody for help, it strengthens your relationship with them, assuming you do it appropriately. You get a stronger connection with people when you ask them for help. People love to help others. And if they're not either not interested or they're not available, they'll let you know. But really, this whole concept of, oh, no, I don't want to, I don't want to impose on people, it's a bunch of BS. If you do it appropriately, you can actually strengthen your relationship by reaching out and asking for help. Of course, you know, you've got to be careful. You don't want to post it on, you don't want to send it out to 500 people, right? You know, it's, it's selective. It's a personal thing. But that's one question is to ask, who do I know or know of instead of how? Big deal. Okay, next question is, what actions can I take this week to further develop my centers of influence? This is an ongoing farming thing. Farmer doesn't plant his seeds and then just, you know, leave and go on vacation. Right? You've got to continually nurture and develop these relationships, which means, um, brings us to another question, is um, ask people, what do you need or want that I can help you with? And you'll find if you have a conversation with me, or certainly most of my clients will tell you this, it, very normally at the end of a conversation, whether I'm asking them for something or I'm coaching or whatever, I always end up with, what do you, you, know, what do you need or want that I might be able to help you with? And people, like, people have never heard that question before. I'm telling you, that's how you strengthen your relationship with people. Roger. I ask that question all the time, number three. Yes. And 99 people out of 100 will tell me they, well, they're taken aback. Yes. They, they don't have an answer off the tip of their tongue. And they tell me that no one has ever asked them that question before. Totally. And, 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 they're, they're not, and like you said, they don't actually even know. So this is, this is about you, you gotta, as you're farming, you've got to bring them along too, along, along on the journey, right? So in the past, you always used to ask, how am I going to make this happen? But, but not any longer. Okay, so um, let's keep moving here. I have now a special secret weapon for you. You want a secret weapon? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> This is a particularly, um, a particularly useful thing I do with, my, uh, with a lot of uh, people, people that I work with as clients, especially ones that are getting started in their business in the new industry. So um, it's a, a stealth strategy for playing a bigger game in order to, number one, expand and upscale your network, because you, now you're starting to see the power of your network and your centers of influence. Number two, learn the secrets of success faster. Would you like to do that? You avoid making so many mistakes and stepping in so many pitfalls. Number three, increase your confidence. Never a bad idea, no matter how confident you already are. And number four, find higher level clients. We're good with that, right? And it goes even more, get in, uh, free advice and mentorship. How's all that sound? This is a secret, like I said, it's a secret strategy. So 
It's ideal, it, it, it can work for all of you and I encourage all of you to consider it, but it's especially good for a couple of people. It's really good for ambitious young people. Remember I mentioned my client um, who, who went up to the million dollar mark, 28 years old. As a financial advisor, he's not meeting many people you know, in between, he's meeting people between 25 and 40, none of them have the kind of money and, and resources that he's wanting to work with, right? So how do you move up? He used this strategy for it. So it's good for people that want to um, get more connected and, and uh, move up to the ranks faster. It's also good for, I call it go-getters. You have to be a go-getter to make this work, by the way. If you're just a boring old person, you don't have the energy Roger's looking for, none of this is going to work for you, really, because people, you've got to be attractive, right? So, um, but the second piece is, is um, what I call go-getters when they're new in a city and they don't know a lot of people, this strategy will really work. I've got a client in Red Deer, financial advisor. She moved from Toronto, but she's really high, high level. And yeah, you're nodding. Um, and um, you know, she, can, she can hold her own with the best of the business leaders in Red Deer. So we've got her out there uh, reaching these people. And the third one is anybody who wants to grow their network, their influence and credibility with those who are older and more successful. So those are the, it's a sweet spot for those three, but it'll work for anyone. And here's how it works. And I've created this whole process. I'm just gonna go over it quickly. Um, I've got it blank because I wasn't sure how much time I'd have, but we've got about five minutes to go through it. Um, so I created this process and um, the concept is that successful people, as they become more successful, they, often, not always, but often want to give back and help others, yes? And so, um, um, it, it's absolutely viable for you to reach out and ask somebody who, you know, you, you've identified as a, um, a, a successful person. They may not even be in your field, but you look at them, they're a bit of a role model, you go, wow, that person's amazing. You, as a, if you put your hat in your hand and humbly go to them and say, I've, I've been watching your business. I come in here, you know, I come into this restaurant regularly and I just think, I watch how you handle your staff. You're amazing. I have a question for you. Could I buy you lunch, your restaurant or someone else's or breakfast or something? I would just love to hear more about your story and how you became who you are and learn a little bit from you. Would be you be open to that? You know what? In my experience, about 70% of people will say yes even though you've never met them before, they don't even know who you are, but if you present yourself energetically and you appear to be a go-getter, people will be happy to meet you because they want to help others, right? And so it's just amazing how, how that can develop. So just start with, you want to, start, want to connect with them and um, you know, hear their story a little bit. So you start, in order for you to put this into plan into action, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to make a list of people that you think would be cool to meet. And then you're going to prioritize it and identify, here's a few people that I want to reach out. Now, uh, Mark Victor Hansen says he should have lunch with a millionaire at least once a week. Oh, but even if you did this once a month, you know, which even for those who don't have that much time, you can probably sneak away for a breakfast or lunch. I often meet clients at 630 in the morning or, or, or people like this as well, because that's the best time is where they, they're not pressed for time. So whatever they do, you make a list, you prioritize it, then you approach them and you ask them for, for if, if they'd be willing to meet with you, you tell them that you admire them, respect them, and you, and you ask for a, a breakfast or lunch, um, never for late in the afternoon or dinner, because all sorts of bad things can happen then. Um, but if they, so if they don't do breakfast or lunch, then you fall back to a coffee meeting or something if you, if you want to do that. And then you prepare for that meeting. You get yourself ready for it. You go look on their website, you find out a little bit about them, find out what their charities are, look at their LinkedIn, talk to people who know them if you, if you want to. So you get a little bit prepared. And then when you go to meet with them, you're early, you're on, um, on time and early, and you have a list of written questions. Now it's not a script, but you wanna have some questions prepared that you know, will draw out what you wanna learn. Like, you know, uh, what's the biggest mistake that you ever made? Or that, um, you know, what's the biggest lesson you've learned in this business? Um, you know, what, what advice would you give to me as a, as, or to any young person in, in my situation? You, you make this list of questions and then you sit down and have this conversation with them. If you want to appear keen and, and get their attention, I'd say take notes 
They'll just sit there like a dummy. I've had that happen before. It's like, I felt like I didn't give the person anything, right? So um, have, the, have them take notes uh, or to take notes, um, ask for advice, um, you know, and you're not trying to impress them. It's the authentic thing that you're talking about. Just be yourself, be humble, and let them do the talking and explaining. And then thank, thank them at the end. And here's, here's where it can go. At the, at the end of it, you're never quite sure what's gonna happen. But um, you know, you could have a nice lunch and that's all, and you get a little bit of information. It's interesting, but not great. Could be a great lunch. It could also be that you get some really fantastic advice. Um, they might, and not, wouldn't be that surprising, that they'll, they could easily say, you know who you should meet is so-and-so. And then you've got an introduction to your next person and you've expanded your, your uh, centers of influence. Um, you know, they, um, uh, they may possibly have a, ask you for a little bit of business. You know what, I've already got my, my financial matters in order for my financial advisors, but I just bought a condo, you know, multi-millionaire guy, right? I just bought a condo. You could do the mortgage insurance on it or something. You, you might get a little bit of work. And, um, you know, the ideal is when you leave, you say, I've been so appreciative. Here's what I've got from it. If it's okay with you, I'd like to um, um, check back within a couple of months and let you know how it's gone, what I've done with what you taught me. And so uh, that's what the point at which you find out their interest in supporting you. If they like you, if they would feel like, yeah, I could coach this person along. I, you know, I'm in a business and I really would be cool to do that. They're an older person. They, they could say, yeah, sure. And then what happens when you go back, they, you, you, um, um, you don't ask them to coach you on the first meeting or anything. You just say, I, I, I'd, I'd like to follow up with you. You don't even ask them to meet again. Like, Can I follow up with you a couple of months, right? And then when you follow up, you say, hey, hi, just listen, um, can we get together again? So you can push, see if they'll get together with you again. And over time, you can build a mentorship relationship for free. Not that you don't need a business coach, you still need one of those. But um, um, you can build a strong mentorship with somebody and save all sorts of hassle, all sorts of errors, get introduced to people at a whole new high level, simply just by um, stepping out and, and putting this into practice. Does this make sense? Is this not a smart strategy? And yet almost nobody ever, ever does it because they're too afraid of what the other person is gonna think. Listen, if the other person doesn't want to get together with you, they'll say no. Don't worry about it. Okay. And then you'll go next and you call somebody else, right? So, yeah, but my experience, about 70% of people, if you present yourself well, will absolutely be willing to meet with you and, um, and share their story because they like to help others. Okay. So your assignment Put what you've learned into practice. It's great. Again, I, I said, I didn't want to teach you intellectual stuff. I wanted something that's really practical that you can go out and do it. So I'm going to ask you a question. How many of you, are you, in this room, of you in this room are committed to taking action based on what I've taught you tonight? That's what we want to hear. Absolutely. Okay. So that's the, that's the centers of influence. That's your gold mine that you're not, ta not reaching into the, the um, vault and taking. It's sitting right there for you. And I'll give you a workbook at the end of this um, talk as well. So you can, you can actually get all the notes on this and exercises to do it as well. Is that good or good? Great. Right? So let's go on to part two. Remember I said at the beginning, I'm going to teach you the single biggest thing I've learned about how to unleash your potential and, and, and um, reach, reach the heights that you want in your business. So my first question, how many of you know that you have the potential to achieve far more than you are today? Okay, anybody who's not raising your hand is a liar, so <laughs> just to be clear, right? You all have the potential to achieve far more than you are today. And um, as I mentioned early on, my, my quest for the last 27 years has been to help people unlock that and achieve not, 
none of us are ever going to do like 95%, but to achieve more of your potential. Because I think that all of us have inside of us, like deep inside of us, there's a part of us that, that is really dissatisfied with mediocrity. You know what I mean? And while we're, we're busy being mediocre, but we're, there's something dissatisfying about that. So I want to show you how you can uh, uh, you know, not settle for that and, and you can step out. So here's a question. What's holding you back? What's, what's the problem? Thoughts. Yeah. Thoughts and your beliefs. Thoughts and beliefs. Absolutely. Big one for sure. Somebody said time. What else? Resources. Money. Resources. Yeah, could be money. Well, let me put it this way. I'm going to give you some, uh, um, a, a different look at it. Here's what the problem is not. The problem is, number one, not a lack of knowledge, intellect, or information. Not that some of you maybe could use more of those things, but it's not what's holding you back from achieving your full potential, for sure. It's not a lack of new strategies and ideas, even though I just gave you a, a strategy, but it's not a lack of that. You could be far more successful exactly who you are today. So it's not a lack of needing a larger network of connections. Again, even though I told you how to get that. That's not going to be the, breaking, the, the, the breakthrough for you in terms of performing at a higher level. And it's not a lack of talent. And it's definitely not a, hard, a lack of hard work for people that are in this room, I'm sure. And it's not a matter of luck. So it's none of those things. Then what is it that determines your success? The number one determiner of success for you is what I call your execution your follow through, the things you actually do, not plan to do, expect to do, learn to do, intend to do any, any of that, but it actually the actions that you take, which I call your personal performance. You all know you could perform at a higher level, but how do we, how do we unleash that? And again, it's not knowing uh, uh, what to do, it's knowing, it, it's more the, the piece of doing what you know. So um, here's an example. Okay, statistics tell us that 65%, get this, 65% of North Americans are overweight or obese. Do you think there's a secret to losing weight? Is it like some unknown that we gotta decipher some hieroglyphics or something? What's the secret? Yes, it's four words. Eat less and exercise. Pretty much summarizes the problem. And yet, if you, if the, the, the diet business is a $60 billion a year industry in North America. And if you Google Amazon and say diet books, over 50,000 books on dieting to say four words, eat less and exercise. It's crazy. So it's, the knowledge isn't the problem, it's the execution, that's where we fall down. So what do we do about that? Well. That's what I've been working on for my entire 27 years. The first question we want to look at is, how do you know whether you're performing or not, right? Are you, are you, you know, where's your level of performance? And here's what I want to, the, the question you can ask and the thing you can look at to determine that. At the end of the week, I want you to ask yourself this question. How much progress did I make this week towards my most important goals? Not just how much, not how much did you get done? Productivity doesn't matter. It's how, much, how far did you move forward towards your goals? That's what matters. So, um, because in, at the end of the day, your performance is gonna be measured by how far you move forward, not the amount that you got done, if that makes sense. So that brings us to the crucial question of the evening. How do you improve your personal performance? And I'm gonna add up the ante on this. How do you improve your personal performance without working harder and without learning anything new? You could still significantly improve your performance. This is the single most important thing that I've learned in 27 years of coaching. So I want you to imagine this. Imagine you're watching TV and there's a sportscaster interviewing a, um, an athlete who's getting ready to go to a, a championship event, the Olympics or whatever. And the, uh, the uh, sportscaster says, so tell me about your, your exercise regime. How, you know, what's going on with that? How's it going? Well, well, says the person, I don't really have a regime. 
I, I just go day by day depending on what feels right in the moment. Think they're going to win? Not going to happen, right? Okay. Okay. Imagine the, um, hearing about a new franchise. It interests you. Say, and um, you you go out to this meeting to check it all out, and, and they say we've got a fantastic product. And you say, Yeah, I know. I love your product. Tell me about your franchise system. Oh well, we don't really have any written systems for it. You know, we, we with the operation side, we just kind of wing it. You gonna sign up for that franchise? No, in spite, it doesn't matter how good the product is. So my point is that the secret to improving your personal performance, the biggest thing uh, where I've learned 27 years, is this. You can do it without working harder, without learning something new, and it's to add structure to your situation. I'll tell you this, structure leads to higher performance, greater consistency, and better results every single time. And I'll tell you, you can, you can find out whether this is true for yourself because all you gotta do is look at everywhere there is high performance happening, there's structure. For example, sports and athletics, we talked about, you find me an Olympic athlete or any professional athlete that isn't following a tight regime of structure. How many hours they sleep, how many calories they, they the higher they rise, the, 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 the more structure they have, yes? Okay, what about in, in franchises? Again, franchises, every franchise that works and lasts is very, very structured. Okay, what about in aircraft and space? Again, we're in a situation where, okay, imagine, imagine you're getting on an airplane and you heard the uh, pilot say to the co-pilot, um, oh, did you do the pre-flight pre check? That guy, the guy was, oh, I looked things over, it looks pretty good. How do you feel about that, getting on that plane, right? Air, anytime there's, there's tight tolerations so, um, and, and a lot at risk, structure. In the military, I had the uh, privilege last year of meeting um, an amazing, one of the Navy SEALs, the lead Navy SEAL, who took out that oil platform in, um, in Iran before they, before they did the shock and awe thing. So he led 24 men onto it. Remember Saddam Hussein said he was gonna blow up all the oil um, facilities? So they took over this thing. The guy was amazing. What he told it was what the Navy SEALs do to plan. The structure is unbelievable. Um, weight loss it works there. Um, companies and organizations, you know, I don't care if it's 1-800-GOT-JUNK or Microsoft, there is a structure that they follow every single quarter. That's how they perform at a high level. And self-employment and self-management, a bit of a problem in this area. And let me tell you why. Okay, how many of you are self-employed or almost everybody here, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in your head for a minute. How many of you, those of you that are self-employed, had a job at one point? Yeah, good, okay. So when you are working at your job, you were working, working and doing what you're told, and you looked around and you went, these people are idiots, yes? True? Yes. Yeah, true, okay. Then you start to see how much money they were making off you. You're getting, you know, fifteen dollars an hour, whatever it is. They're making, they're making barrels to the bank, and you go, look at all this money. I want to get some of that. Yes. And the third reason that you went on your own, this is the big one, because you didn't want anybody telling you what to do and when to do it and how to do it. Yes. But here's the problem: when you made that decision, you threw out the baby with the bathwater. You threw out all the structure. I used to work at Xerox. We had meetings on Monday mornings. I had reports I had to fill in, all that kind of stuff. As soon as I started working on my own, I went nowhere because I was just sitting there. It's like in a, you know, a, a swamp, not moving, right? Structure leads to performance. So 20 years of development, I created a system and, and, and it absolutely is it, the most remarkable thing ever. But it's a, um, it's a structure that helps small business owners and self-managing entrepreneurs be more effective with their time. So they get more results, faster, with less effort, and the world is a, you know, it's a beautiful thing. It's a, a masterpiece, over 5,000 people have used it, and the results are consistent. Every one of our clients makes money, because as you, I mentioned earlier, many of our clients stay 10 and even 20 years. 
thing works like crazy. That's my contribution to the world. And so um, uh, if you want to know more about that, I'd be more than happy to tell you about it and have a conversation with it. Uh, for now, we're pretty much out of time, I think. And I just want to ask, leave you with this. If you're really happy with the path you're on and the way things are going, stay the course. But if you want to get ahead faster, if you want to accelerate and, and, and um, reach a higher level, there has to be an intervention of some sort. It doesn't need to be me, but you need to find some way to do something different and you can't do it yourself, all right? So um, I'd be happy, as I said, to talk to anybody who's interested and tell you more about what I do. That's not what I came here for. I came here to teach you something. Did you get some value? You're gonna put into practice, yes? That's what matters to me, is that you get empowered and go and reach your goals. And then one of these days, um, raise your hand if you came here to see me tonight because you've been touched by my work over time. Laura, yeah, look, at, she came all the way from Victoria um, because it works. So um, it's a privilege to have you guys here and I just love you all. So with that, we'll wrap up. Um, I mentioned I have a gift for you. So um, we're gonna hand out, actually Roger, we're gonna hand these out. Um, this is just asking you if you want this workbook um, to give us your contact information, make sure we, you write your email address so we can see it, so we can send you the workbook. Um, um, so this workbook has all the content I've talked about in here, plus some exercises at the end. And if you have a desire and feel like I might be a, a coach you'd be interested in working with, check the box and we'll um, have a further conversation and see whether it's a fit. And most of all, I couldn't do this without you. Thanks for coming out. Go kick some ass and um, onward and upward. So thank you for the privilege.